morning and welcome to Ark and Dove Presbyterian Church in Odenton, Maryland. I'm Brian Boudreaux, the clerk of session here at Ark and Dove and your host in the lobby, the weekly program of the life and ministry of the church. Now, today is the 22nd Sunday after Pentecost, and as part of our Harvesting Generosity series, I will be talking to a panel about our justice and inclusion uh, projects. So let's first look at what's happening this week. Um, and actually, I should say, next week, October 31st, will be All Saints Sunday, and we've got a little change up on how we're doing things. So we will first have a 9 a.m. service, that's a change from our 915 service, and it will be uh, indoors with uh, special music. Uh, so this service will not be live streamed and all of our pandemic precautions will be in place. So we'll ask everybody to wear masks and continue to social distance. Uh, we will continue for the next several months um, and our 1030 AM hybrid experience, which is in person and live stream will also continue uh, with preschool and godly play. So All Saints Sunday, we will celebrate that on October 31st, like I said. Um, and if you have uh, somebody that you have lost in the last year, um, we, although the deacons and, and uh, pastors are trying to keep track of this, um, we would ask you to please, um, uh, if you'd like to share that with the church, email admin at arkandove.org, um, and we will ensure that their name um, is in the bulletin. I'd also like to add that we have Logos uh, every Tuesday from 6 to 7 p.m. And that's our midweek program for our youth pre-K through elementary uh, fifth grade. We also have youth group uh, every Sunday, 6 to 8th grade at 4 o'clock. And then high school from 5 to 6.30. You can email Pastor John if you have any questions. Our outreach and connections team is still looking for volunteers to help set up or clean up uh, after Sunday fellowship uh, at the snack table. So you can contact Nicole Howe uh, to get signed up for that. There are also lots of uh, Christian ed opportunities out there. So you can find that by scanning the QR code in the archive. And there's a ton of activities and it goes all the way into 2022. Also this week on Friday is the parents group. Parents of all sorts are welcome for fellowship at the church this Friday, October 29th at 6.30 p.m. Uh, we're going to have some seasonal snacks. So please let Pastor John know uh, if you're coming and if you need child care. So this week in our series, Harvesting Generosity, uh, I'm, we're going to be talking about um, justice and inclusion, but it's such a big part of what we do here at Ark and Dove, I, I can't just interview one person. So I've actually asked a panel to join me today. So I have uh, Paula Sparks and Amy Tardiff and Shirley Fuller uh, to join us in the lobby. Welcome all three of you. So glad you could be here with us. Thank you. Good morning. Hi, good to see you. Justice and inclusion is, is a very broad <laughs> subject. So I'd like to just take, uh, take a moment and maybe each of you could sort of talk about uh, what that means for your team and, and, and what that represents. So um, let's start with you, Paula. Our group is the anti-racism group. It's important because we're charged by PCUSA um, in their statement that acknowledges racism is the opposite of what God intends for humanity. And anti-racism work is an essential part of our Christian discipleship. Um, so that's what we've been, been working on since about 2015, is to get people familiar with, with the racism that exists in our country, what it is, what it is not. And, and Shirley, why don't you tell us a little bit about your group and the mission work that you're doing? Well, I'm involved in the, the ACT team at church, I guess the core team. And uh, I think most people at church are probably familiar with this, probably even more than I, since I've just been here about two years. But I was uh, immediately attracted to the fact that our church partners with ACT, which stands for Anne Arundel Connecting Together. And it's uh, a way for um, organizations interested in justice and building relationships across culture, faith, and differences in Anne Arundel County to work together. And I just love the aspect that we're taking that wonderful caring mission spirit at Ark and Dove out into the community and partnering with other churches and institutions that are also interested in, in that. So it kind of gives us extra oomph and power in the community. It's a really great organization that I'm really proud that Arkandov is one of the 28 organizations, mostly churches, that are involved. Yeah, and I should say that those organizations are not necessarily all completely like-minded, but we have a lot of issues uh, that we do have similarity on, and so we unite together on that front. Exactly. 
Amy, could you tell us about your team and what you are working on? I am part of the GLEAM team uh, that stands for God's Love Embraces All ministry team. Ark and Dove has long been a welcoming and affirming church. Um, and our team's goal is to help Ark and Dove broaden or deepen our welcome of all, focusing on LGBTQIA plus um, congregants and their uh, family members and loved ones. We work for the full inclusion of uh, all LGBTQIA plus members and friends. And we also do the continual work of supporting and advocating for uh, the queer community within our church and the broader community and the world. Oh, wow. That's a heavy lift. And I really thank you for, for doing that and, and taking that on. How do you approach uh, your ministry and the GLEAM team? Um, what, what do you need to be able to achieve uh, what you're doing? One of the things that we do in order to achieve our mission is to uh, do the continual work of educating ourselves about the needs of, of the LGBTQIA plus community um, and ways that we can support queer people, their family members, um, their loved ones. We do this through uh, book discussions, film discussions, small groups, guest speakers, um, or possibly visiting pastors to preach sermons on LGBTQIA plus uh, topics. We are a visible presence in the community. We have our banner out at the road. Um, we also participate in pride events and host our own events here at the church um, so that we are making ourselves visible and that everyone knows that we are here, um, that we are a church that will affirm and welcome everyone. We also uh, do the work of making sure that our space, the actual physical space of our church is affirming of people and welcoming so that everyone feels comfortable and supportive in, in their needs. When you say uh, our space, uh, what, what does that entail? We want to make sure that our space reflects that we respect and affirm all gender identities. We also uh, want to make sure that people know that um, in uh, respecting their gender identity, we are acknowledging um, pronouns in a way that um, makes them feel supported. Why is this important for uh, for people, not just in Ark and Dove, but in the Presbyterian Church and in you know in the Christian faith? Well, to be honest, uh, churches have a long history of excluding uh, the LGBTQIA plus community. There are many people who have been hurt by the church. Ark and Dove recognizes that we are all created in God's image. We are all children of God. Um, we certainly want everyone to have that experience in church. Um, we also want to be a presence for people who are seeking a church community in a way that is not going to be harmful to them, um, in a way that will support their family members so that when they walk in that door, they do not have to be fearful um, of how they will be treated, of language that will be used. We want everyone to feel welcome and, and loved. That's what our church is all about. And, and that's that inclusion mission that we have. Absolutely. Absolutely. Shirley, could you maybe describe for us then what you have to do to, to carry out your mission in ACT and, and, and what you need from uh, the congregation? Most of what's involved right now is participate. <laughs> so no matter what it is that ACT is doing, if they're having a, a Zoom meeting or a Zoom gathering, a Zoom training, an actual in-person action, they call it, when they actually go out to something that ACT is working for uh, or towards and show up in person. From an individual part, that's what one does. From the sort of a financial aspect, uh, ACT is pretty much volunteer organizations and individuals. However, there is uh, a lead coordinator and uh, maybe one staff person. And so that does require some actual funds. There's so many items on the wish list. More funds always equals more ability. We can have more impact in the, in the larger community, right? The question I have for you right now, Paula, as far as the anti-racism, maybe you could talk about your personal experience then and sort of the, the journey along and where you are now. I like a lot of what Amy said about GLEAM because it applies as well to the inclusion and social justice that we try to create through the anti-racism program. What we need to be able to do this is, first of all, the education. Like you said, we are constantly reading different books and educating ourselves so that we can present um, different concepts to the congregation. Over the past several years, we've done a lot in the church, but it's been a lot harder since COVID and we've had to you know, do some other things. So we've created Racism 101 and Racism 102 that, that talk about what racism is. We also created slide presentations that went out into the community. One went to Woods Presbyterian Church, and the other went to ACT, 
really what it takes is stamina, a willingness to learn, and a willingness for the congregation to participate and understand that even though we you know, pick up some knowledge, we learn some of the history and we think all of a sudden we're woke, we have a long way to go because the prejudices that we have are just really ingrained in us. So I'd like to turn to you, Shirley, and maybe you can talk uh, very quickly about under the umbrella of harvesting generosity, in order for your mission to continue, what do you need from the congregation? What does ACT require from us? Definitely some some time from those who are particularly interested in it as a, as a mission of the church um, to participate in ACT online Zoom trainings, relationship building. They teach us how to uh, do one-on-one -on -one conversations with people to build the relationships within the group and then within our church and community. Of course, on top of that, funds, certainly um, all organizations require some funding. And giving to the regular budget really helps with the ACT funding. So, so our regular giving uh, helps fund the, the and support uh, the ACT mission in our community. Exactly. Amy, with uh, the Harvesting Generosity theme, sort of what your program uh, needs in terms of support and, and funding and, and, and even volunteers. A big part of our support and advocacy is uh, educating ourselves, keeping our classrooms and our library stocked with uh, books, titles that affirm and support uh, the queer community, uh, people of all ages. Uh, we also host uh, small discussion groups, films, book discussions, um, to be able to bring in guest speakers, as I said before, pastors to preach on LGBTQIA topics in service. It would be wonderful to be able to financially support them with the important work that they're doing. We also work to create safe spaces for support groups. Uh, we feel it's very important for people to have that safe space to feel supported um, and to, to keep those, those two groups separate. We do have our banner at the street, which uh, is publicly visible. It would be wonderful to be able to have another banner so that when we attend pride events or host our own events on the church property or possibly somewhere else, we don't have to take that one down and keep putting it back up. And also to have handouts for the community when we do attend those events, um, particularly for the youth. We really feel a need to support our youth. Uh, Anne Arundel County doesn't really have a lot. Um, for queer kids uh, as far as support um, spaces to meet um, that affirm them. So we, we really want to work towards that. Thank you, Amy. And Paula, under the umbrella of uh, harvesting generosity, um, what, what you need uh, to continue your mission work? We have a small budget that we can use for speakers or um, occasionally there are workshops that we can help offset the cost of workshops. And there are books. So um, we came across one that's very, very expensive. And so we're going to use some of the money to help offset that for anybody who would like to participate in that. But I will say that most of the speakers, a lot of them, are much more expensive than the $800 budget that we have. Documentaries have a fee attached to them for organizations to be able to show them. What are you doing going forward? Um, in January and February, Pastor Tim and I are going to be leading a six-week study of, it's a great book by Robin DiAngelo. It's her new book called Nice Racism. In the meantime, in November, we have this book, Anxious to Talk About It, and we'll have a book discussion on this. It's less than 200 pages, so I'm hoping people will read it. Shirley, real quick, could you tell us maybe something that's in the pipeline for ACT? I've been involved in one of the research action teams that they kind of nicknamed RATS. It started out being an um, investigation of universal internet access for Anne Arundel County because we're stirring COVID. We found that not every child has internet access in their home. We kind of went down a, a path looking to what we could do for that. The path has actually taken us more to digital literacy. So just, which is something we think we'll be able to have more of an impact with, looking at maybe partnering with a library system that is also going to be working on digital literacy and some other things. There's a woman who's super involved in ACT who's also with the county library system. And so that relationship has helped us to know where we can help them and, you know, kind of help each other. So. And Amy, for your, for your group, what, what do we have in the, in the pipeline? Next week, uh, the 29th, uh, uh, First Presbyterian Church of Annapolis will have a guest speaker, Julie Rogers. Uh, she's featured in the Netflix film Pray Away, and she, is, she will be speaking on her personal experience and her book, uh, Out Love. Uh, November 20th, which is a Saturday, is Trans Day of Remembrance. Um, this is a day where we look back on the year in remembrance of 
trans people who were killed for their uh, gender identity. Um, so we will be holding an event on the church grounds, um, candlelight vigil, reading of names. In December, um, we hope to host a book discussion of the book Transforming. And then Amanda has some classes planned for January or February, I believe, um, LGBTQIA plus history. I'm going to speak on behalf of all three of you that, that I, I know that you would always look for more volunteers, more participants in all of these uh, <laughs> activities. And right. there's, always, there's always room for more. So um, if you're out there listening in one of these or all of these uh, groups uh, sing to you, then by all means, um, you know where to find them. So I would just want to thank all three of you for joining me today um, and for sharing us, uh, sharing with us and, and the entire congregation, uh, the work that you're doing. And I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. And thank you to everyone out there for tuning in. Uh, it's a pleasure to be able to come into your home or wherever you are uh, and, and share this experience with you. More details about everything we talked about can be found in the archive or on the webpage. So October is Pastor Appreciation Month. So I just wanna send my thanks out again to Pastor John and Pastor Tim for um, the wonderful work that they do uh, and they're ministering to us. So stay safe, get vaccinated and have a great week. And I look forward to seeing you in the uh, fellowship after the service, the live stream service will begin in a moment.